Hello there, my name is Scott, welcome back to Stygian and Rayo the Old Ones. Last time I was having a little bit of a trouble and I've been trying to figure out for the past couple of days how we're going to get, essentially find a way to continue on to the blast of the street. I was having a bit of a trouble. Then I realized the idiot me, again, I was looking through my inventory and I found the Vader's diary. That this diary should be the only remnant of a blasted street victim offers the most protruding testimony. And apparently, as I read this out, I realized, oh shit, I'm an idiot. So, let me read through this and give you what I've read here. You still stay in the Providence, you idiot. Why do you have to bring your family to this godforsaken place? Essex Hotel, they said. The Jewel of Arkham, they said. Damn it all, Miskatan River boat trip my ass. <coughs> now I take, now I can take all the trips I want in those icy waters right alongside the monsters out of fancy books. But to call them monsters would be an insult, as the real monsters are those mafioso cutthroats who settled in the hotel. They threw me and my family out onto the streets. That's the street. Not to mention that I barely managed to rest my, rest my wife from their dirty hands. Now we're living, or more precisely, surviving in the miserable freezing slum in Derby Street, and my goddamn American do dollars are as valuable as the rags and tatters I wear for clothing. <sighs> I've milled through all the trash and I've placed every alley, leaving no stone unturned. I can't find any food nor cigs. Everything's been pillaged. The little Mikey's withering day by day. I must do something. I must do something for my family. <sighs> Today I scout around that cursed place they've come to call the Blasted Street and remain ob oblivious to what sort of wickedness hides there. But the air doesn't seem to, to have been looted yet. I can just cobble together some kind of armor to protect myself. Perhaps I can salvage something that hasn't, been, hasn't yet been sacked and then borrowed off for essentials. Just when that garrulous Heinz would have, would have been of some use, the black guard vanished. I had to listen to him praise his wretched page pattern for a week. I was so stupid not to pay closer attention. My chances would have been much better with, with, that, with that than with these rags. God, please spare me from this that sickening dust. Give me a chance for my family. And with that, I think we have to now go back to the Essex Hotel, which are right now in front. I did kind of move a bit around. And yeah, let's find out uh, if Etienne knows of Mr. Hines. How many extra help to XX and her humble servant Etienne help you? Did the man named Hines used to stay here, Etienne? Etienne blinks a couple of moments that they might help him recollect. Hines? I remember that name, Monsieur. Opening the hall of the register, he begins to flip through his pages in an elegant manner. Ah, yes, Heinz, the inventor from uptown. He was here to meet Monsieur Griffith for business, I assume. How could I forget his constant bragging about entrepreneurship and, of course, his new patent? Oh, senor, the patent of his. Small man, big mouth, if you excuse my language, strolling around uh, with his suitcase all the time, bar battering the hotel guests wherever we had the chance. Do I know where I can find this, Heinz? Let me take Monsieur. It was one on the tip of his pointy mustache. I recall seeing him leave the hotel on a night of special screening. Ah, yeah, oh, ye. Ah, uh, oui. Monsieur Griffith sent for an automobile to take him to the Arkham Theater. With his suitcase that he held so dear, he left for the night. Did he ever reach the theater? Who is that? That night, Monsieur, was right before everything went downhill. I can't remember much about what happened next. We're talking about Tien seems to be struggling with unseen force shrouding his memories until it becomes apparent he has lost a battle once again, a battle that no reason of his town could ever win. Uh, whatever, Monsieur, I've learned that the worst nightmares are the ones you would wake up to. We are still in the same nightmare, all of us, whether or not we remember when we fell asleep. Where is the Arkham Theater? To the northwest, Monsieur, on the high street, or Pilgrim's Parish is now called, because it's throat, <clears throat> and I've heard awful things about that place. Those cultists. Shadow of fear has fallen over his eyes now. We Lafayette have in, in the past had our own share of peculiarities, but those fanatics, they are a different breed. Once in a while, some of them stay at Essex, he continues in whisper. The things they do to each other, Monsieur. Rituals of mass debauchery, torture, worshipping, the things you would kill yourself to forget. In which rooms at uh, Heinz Day? As you already know, the privacy of our guests is inviolable, Monsieur, but... Because it's so regardless <coughs> <laughs> the room they stayed in, 104, is unfortunately lacking a door at the moment. So it's hard to reserve any kind of privacy in that peculiar room, I'm afraid. Special screening? It was a talk of the town for quite some time, Monsieur. A foreign entrepreneur coming to Arkham for a very exclusive event. The screening of a moving picture for a selective audience. The creme de la creme of Arkham. Mayor Anderson, Chief Constance, Mr. Griffith, even Father Grayson, conservative old gentleman that he was, attended the evening. Never saw him again. It's your nervously adjusted bow tie. 
I sometimes can't help but wonder, Monsieur, would things have been better if they had still been around after the Black Day? We we'll never know. And who is this Griffith? Oh, you haven't heard of him, Monsieur. He's the owner of the Griffith Coton Go. He was one of the most influential men in Arkham, a leading industrialist. He's looking away. I also heard that he could be a pretty demanding person, especially to his workers, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know those kind of people. They can't get rich by exploiting the poor. Hmm, it is simple as that, Monsieur. Don't they have uh, at least some merit to succeed? Just wondering. You have an idea what this power was for? You know, it's rather hard to pay attention to what Monsieur Hines is throwing at you, but I guess it involves some kind of... Hmm, let me see. How do they call it? Occupational hazard prevention something? The inside while well straightening his bow tie. If you inquire about something like how a honeymoon breakfast should be served, you surely have gotten better information, Monsieur. No honeymoons in Arkham, though. Not anymore. I see. Goodbye, and thus we now know that we can go to the theater, the Arkham Theater, and that's where he maybe dropped the patent. And the door is open over there. What will happen? Crave cigarettes, bootleg whiskey. Okay. Heinz Hazard Suit Brochure, Brown Suit, Carol. Oop, my. You guys hear a little bit of a clicking sound in the headphones? That's me trying to get up. And there's a patent? Heinz Hazard Suit Brochure. Do your workers event frequently get afflicted with Monday fever? Do your most experienced foreign man cough their way to afterlife? Break them with Heinz co parented worker suit. Ensure constant production and keep your income stable. And that is what we needed. This thing. This thing is what we needed. Well, and then the only way we can get that. <coughs> where is it? In the Arkham Theater. So we're gonna have to go in and find a way we can uh, get in. <clears throat> okay, so we'll make our way out, and I do want to purchase some things just in case, also. As you guys remember, the search actually had uh, given me quite a bit of six during the last episode of the search, where I was collecting quite a number, numerous amount of six. So, we'll make our way to Honest Bills. I want to purchase. maybe sell some stuff? Maybe? Uh, trade. Yes, I'm not really going to enter conversation. So, also, I think I was. There's my shovel. Okay. Uh, oh, there's a couple of them shots I can ask. Yeah, just give me all of them, and I will sell you with to my boot like whiskey and a. Needle and thread. Actually, I can probably get less of them shots to take only two. And I also want to sell. I'll sell, I guess, one alcohol maybe. Uh, two corns. <coughs> there we go, deal. So now I got a couple more lot of shots we can use. Cool, cool. I could sell the brown suit though. Got one more. Yeah, let's get one more. Never can be assured. Look at those cigs. I have too many cigs in my inventory right now. Uh, and I'm. Hmm, actually. So if I sell all my cigars, I might need more food, I think. If he even has food, does. I just got only three beans left. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> we'll deal with that, I guess. Alright, there we go. We got some food. Just in case, because food rations are very important in this game, and I don't want to lose them. And you might get more. I mean, he's, he's always got stuff in stock, so... Hey, and the bottles. Sweet. Um, got a couple of autumn shots, so hopefully those, those will help out. So, now we'll just have to make our way back to, uh... Le Pilgrim's Parish! Oh yeah, we're still diseased. Right. Alright, so we'll make our way to Bungless Parish. 
You hold the sight of a gargantuan silhouette rising above the mist that blanks the land. The moment you realize that it is actually moving, stagger a staggering fear fills your mind. No living thing this size could possibly exist. Make your way past the creature at safe distance. Turning back uh, does not seem like a good idea, so you decide to circumnavigate the cause entity. Unfortunately, this new path takes you into much rougher terrain and you lose a considerable amount of time. And we gain some angst. Also, well, time we lost, but I guess we can recover that with uh, disease. So, disease is recovered a bit. So, now we'll head through here. A boat has arrived. Brethren, don't forget why we've come to these inland lands. Isles. Okay, I think he said something like we catch all of it. Wench them of their defiled homes. Out of their holes in which they hide. They have no purpose but to serve as means for our rituals. What's going on? And uh, as for those who will shed the residue of the past, and thus will be free, bring them aboard. Something's going on. So, what quest we have? Uh, find Hines in Theodore Bones. Uh, from a journal I found one of the last three victims I read about a, named, a man named Hines. Hines Hines had a plan for a product that could help protect against noxious conditions of the street. I also mentioned that he was staying at the Essex Hotel. I learned that Hines was last seen on the special screen in the Arkham Theater. According to what that can told me, Hines had a suitcase with him. Let me go to check out his theater in Pilgrim's Parish. Well, that's what we're doing. What's going on, actually? There's some whipping, there's some pile of robes, it seems. Okay. Come closer, brethren. I can see that the fruit of rena renunciation is ripe in some of you. Beyond these doors, you'll submit your hearts and purge your souls. Beyond these doors, you've witnessed the perfection as our beautiful doom. Step inside and purge the last fragments of your former self in the unearthly glow of Cellulus. I need to get inside. You insolent, you are impertinent, clueless thing. You're not even among our ranks, yet you dare demand access to the sanctified ground? Be gone, before we unmake you and your whole family. Okay. What is... There's some whipping going on. And there's a pile of robes. Cultist robes. Ooh, crafting idea. Hmm, some cultist robes over here. What if... Oi! Ow! Alright, we got the headgear and cultist ropes. There we go. That was actually not that hard. Oh, yeah, so I got the rot disease in us. Alright, so now we got the cultist robes, so now we need to look out like a cultist. Done. I am a cultist. Behold, I am the cultist. Yes, I worship your god. Yee-ho. Or whatever. Whatever you guys do. Right. How did you come to join our ranks, brother? Like most of us, I was amongst the wretched. We were hundreds, wandering without purpose like starving dogs. I was fading away, brother. Fast, desperately beating myself over memories of my youthless past. How can I forget, brother? Then I start hearing the words. The word of the High Priest. That he st at the start of the hallowed march, numerous illiterates were trailing along after him and his shikes. I was curious and had nothing to lose, brother. Tisk into his eyes. You know the rest. He showed me how worthless I was under the shadow of the old ones I always been. The falsity that was my former life had never been whole, fractured, always had been. He apparently pushed the script in your hands while quoting an alien tongue. Pilingi nafurken Cthulhu rely wigna fling flungton. The Vedians joined him as uh, as baritone to his hellish chorus. Fling fling Cthulhu Ryan Wungle Flexon. The hungry explanation in his eyes makes it clear he wants your participation. Ting Tal Kintlam Kashadwa. Who would have figured death in the numbers of my performance? Fool, don't you know the channel of the Dreaming Father? Should have been punished by the hand of shikes for such impotent pathetic. 
Be gone before I call a hand to whip you. Alright. I need to get inside. From that, as you can see, he's carefully wearing your quirt. You have shield, brethren. That is good. Yet I can't help but wonder have you threw something in your blood and soul of the cult? Show me your mo show me your mark of cleansing. Well, speaking of which, there's something else I can I need to do. Because his voice resonates it's sufficient now. Uncover your chest and show me your mark of cleansing. Looking right at me, my brother. What have you chosen to ban me from your past? I'll show the point. I'll be back soon. As you move to leave the scene, the crier cult shouts you from behind. Leave fledgling! Don't return until you have purged every trace of your false life. Oh, okay, so we now have to find a way. Maybe, um. Korag might know something. Since he's a former cultist of that group. Oh, great. Now we will face Wax Faces Men. <laughs> that will be fun. We don't even have decent items, maybe. Should we just fight them? Yeah, I mean, these are black faces guys, I mean, it's not that hard to beat them, I believe. Yep. Yeah, these guys are easy to beat. Yeah. Okay, ouch. Alright, doggo. Uh, or, actually, let's go in front of the guy. Four damage. Shoot this one. Good job, nameless one. Focus. Eduardo, let's shoot up this one. Nice shot. Nice shot. Focus. Oi, you don't beat the dog up. How dare you! Never beat the dog up, especially when his master is so close and could shoot you with one bullet. Like that. Winston, teach that boy, teach that monk a lesson. Monk, what the fuck? I don't know why I said that. There we go, good job. Let's defend. Ooh, it missed. Yay, good job. Ah, oh, he's getting some morphine shot, I see. And he's missed me. Alright, let's shoot up this one. Good shot, Eduardo. Good shot, Eduardo. Good shot, Nameless One. Nameless Soldier, not Nameless One. Tell him something. Oh no, he's. Oh, he's going paranoid. There we go. I forgot Roderick has this problem with paranoia. There we go. All enemies killed. It's money, gunpowder, sh bullets, pistol, ammo, headgear, rations. There we go. Hmm? Alright, continue moving on. And we also probably should purchase some bullets then, since we have quite a bit of dot to any ammo. Actually, we're still actually pretty good in terms of ammo, so... I mean, I got a bunch of guns so I can sell. H&W military police pistol, military police revolver. Still got the Honda Flintlock with some of my extra stuff. Dot 30 ammunition, dot 45 ammunition. I might sell the DB HW. I don't really like the HW somehow. Just because I think the ammo is expensive. Oh, we'll figure something out. And also, I could also sell my Feral.2 of any. So. If I'm guilty on the charges, they're off. Just, just as no knight in Arkham is ever torn by the moon to the warm and encomposing um, arms of the sun, no castaway of the ruins of Siam is ever likewise be exempt from being frequented by one of its creepy patients. The scruffy man with swollen eyes begs ba bags reeks of kerosene for some reason. Excuse me, would you spare some rations or some matches? Why would you need that? 
I was a plague sent to punish an angel and smelly shit to be the bedaub the face of mankind. Therefore, I, the maggot of Zerb, must be washed off from his face. Are you sure you're alright? Benevolence is fire that should not be fed often, for it must burn steadily. Galvanize the flames, will soon become cinders. Hmm. Do you know what hell sounds like? Which would screams of your beloved greet you as you enter its black gates? And you can't do a damn thing. They'll call for help. Beg for a sweet touch, but you can do nothing. self depreciately Hell happens to them because of you, you ignorant, selfish piece of shit. It's a him. Alright. Just calm down and tell me what's the problem. Since death took her, what's left of my fragile sanity has been di has been di dripping away like water does from the tap in the sink. With her every whimpering breath, I was losing the war to protect my puny human humanness, front by front. I can emphasize, we all taste lost in this dismal place. Indifferent. I don't want a damn match. Do you have it or not? Here, you can have my cigars in return. Hawaiian imports. We done. Take it. Give the matches. Dust ash and relevant non-existence. Now, if you don't mind, I'd very much like to become one with dust. Now, if I ever guess, piss off, to piss on my grave, let the earth drink my shame. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> Lawyer's suicide note. Poor guy. Well, we'll at least keep him in peace. Wait, where is this? Uh, wait. Where is this? I literally can't find it. Uh, is it here? There it is. Now, single living creature would ever wish to hear that sentence. She didn't make it, I'm sorry. The awful power of those words seemed more than what flesh and blood was made to withstand. Upon the news of my mother's sickness had become terminal, madness began, began its inexorable or, oration. In my feeble attempt to bring salvation to the unflagging misery of this world, I fed my vanity with my sorrow and thus came to find myself sitting in the lap of evil. How mortifyingly ironic that by allying myself with wax face, I became his lawyer and the embodiment of every embodiment of everything I detested. I was convinced that if I could use the money, tainted though it was, for good and justice, it would not matter. But would an agent of good murder someone as I murdered the lady at the customs? Yes, it was me who had killed her. As with every failure that entails punishment in the law of lawless, I do, do, duly received my share as well. I flinched. I just wasn't as good as a liar as I thought I was. Waxface, sitting open the la slitting open the lady's throat slowly in front of me, held my hands and pressed them against the crimson mob that appeared on her neck, saying, her blood is really on your hands. Take crimson, see crazy. Poor guy. Apparently, it was not so much sufferance of the horrors of seeing Arkham as a broken, tormented state of his conscience, where, where from Rose's intractable wish for fiery death. <sighs> Poor guy. Well, we at least gave him some stuff. We got some matches out of it, but we at least, you know, we'll give him a piece. No one wants to live in this place, except for the time we have to escape. No, oh, because oh, we we're wearing. Yep, yeah, right. We got. My bad. Sorry. I did trade. I forgot that the game sometimes does the moments where it's like, oh yeah, if you come in like looking like that, good luck. So I give him my feral dot to Sventi, and I need some ammo. I need a couple of your. Wow, there's only five left, and there's no point in even selling my feral then. Unless I can get some other ammo. Hmm. Maybe a dot thir. Maybe some more dot forty fives? Sure. I mean, I, I already got a, a feral to Zivani, so I don't really need one. Uh. Okay, uh. Alright, I'm gonna try it out with SIGs. There you go. Thank you for your business. Let's leave. <laughs> Maybe he might reach socks sooner. So we'll go him later when we like wait some time out. Let's head and meet up with Korag. Maybe he might know what this whole marking business is. 
Did you ever dare to take him? He's been chosen to experience the beyond woman. Come, my child. Mama? Over my dead body. As you wish. <clears throat> Take the boy, we are leaving. Holy crap. Jeez, that was horrific. This mode is a perennial of Gracious violence should perhaps be contracted by the common folk as a gift of ruthless benevolence. For who can commonly argue that the ones recruited by the cult are luckier than those who become their victim? Yeah, but... He lost his mother. Like, jeez. Like, damn. He tried to protect him. <sighs> How cruel Arkham can be sometimes. And hello, Korag. Look at pages of visit, Barzal. What do you have for me in the bag of yours? Perhaps shot a morphine? Do you know anything about the mark of cleansing? An expression of misery, Kor uh, Korak glanced over the strange scars on his body before answering. Uh, do I know about them? I have hundreds on my body. Turning to his invisible ally. Barzal Dark, sometimes I suspect you persuaded me not to kill him as, much as some kind of cruel joke. So this girl explains. The mark is the cult's way of separating you from your past and everything that you once held dear. Initiates usually get one or two scars. In rare cases, if the Shrake suspect the initiate is resisting the indoctrination, they may inscribe more. Drops his heavy frustration. I'm sure I hold the record. But tell me first, by the name of all powers, why do you want to bear the mark of cleansing? You wouldn't be asking this of me if you had joined those deviant ranks. What are you after? I need to get inside the Arkham Theater. Oh, the Theater of Bones, you mean? You won't be the same person after going inside a haunted place, you know that? You know that? Or you won't be the same person after going inside that haunted place, you know that? I just, I need to get the mark. Well, well, I've had myself so many times, I'm sure I can perform the ritual, but you ought to be prepare yourself, both physically and mentally, before we begin. For a brief moment, you think you can see a hint of excitement on Croc's face. It will surely take its toll on you. I see, I'll be back. Well, if it's mentally, then... Booze! Booze, 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 where is it? Uh... One more few shot. No, it's time for booze. Ah, yes, we're addicted to alcohol now! <laughs> I think we're ready. Quick save. I'm ready for the mark of cleansing, Krog. You think so? I don't think one can ever be completely prepared for such a violation. But let's suppose you are. Now, if you want to work, listen and absorb my every word from now on. Before the cleansing ritual, you should choose something from your former life that you are deeply attached to. Something that has turned into a weakness, a liability in this new age. Target the emotion that holds you back most. Let's suppose that you miss your late mother. According to the cult's creed, you can't be free of your shackles without purging that feeling. If you're attached, you remain selfish slave to yourself. Look deep inside your persona and find an emotion. Locate the glass room that will shatter them with the gentlest touch. The mark will shape itself according to what's inside the glass room. Cross whispering takes a ceremonial turn. Tell me what's inside your glass room, child leech. Oof. Friendship, compassion, love, longing, self respect, curiosity. Longing. I deeply miss the bygone times of my life. Thermal Cultist takes a piece out of iron and holds in the flame a ritual candle while his whispering assumes a resolute but monotonous pace. The past is a better torrent, child. You will stay the prisoner of sorrow so long you cling to the obsolescence of your former self. Cleanse yourself and be reborn as a thrall of the old ones. You're carried ba back to the realm of consciousness by a throbbing pain. You feel lighter, you feel more shallow, you are alive but somehow feel incomplete. Acquired mark of cleansing, longing. Your eyes involuntarily fall to the nexus of your suffering, your chest, where you now carry the mark of cleansing. A pulsating wound scrapes upon your flesh, but one which burns your, your psyche. Kra is standing next to you with a clear look at its face on his face. Ah, 
You awake? I don't like the look on your face. I can't count how many times I have to, I have to go through this. Always as, a, as the victim, always the cleansed. When you come to me voluntarily asking for just something in me, just ticked. And then it made sense. I understood the guilty pleasure of a father beating his sudden return for the beating he got from his own father. What can I say? For once, I had the chance to make someone feel like I did. In the end, everybody got what they're looking for. Well, I better have to Pilgrim's Parish now. Okay, and we are now got we got the mark. Lost some sanity and some health, and we lost a piece of ourselves now. And now we got the cleansing of longing. The stigma on your flesh uh, erases your sense of longing, easing your mental burden, but finding no solace and happy memories leaves you more remorseful. And, yeah, look at our statuses. Jesus Christ. We are unlucky guys, aren't we? Alright, guys. I think I've run out of time, I think. So, I'm going to end the episode right here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. We finally got through the Pilgrim's Parish. And now we found a way to continue the story, which I'm happy for. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give this a like, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below if you have any questions. Until then, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See you later.